Hi everybody, it's Ed with Over the Hills 2019. Well, it's official. We have been full-time RVing for 18 months now, and the last 13 of those months, and including the present, uh, we've spent boondocking. Uh, we're currently in Quartzsite, outside of Quartzsite on BLM land, and we've kind of come full circle. This is where we first started uh, our boondocking experience last year, and we boondocked all year, and now we're back here doing it again. So we thought it'd be a great opportunity to share with you uh, the rock solid purchases that we made. I mean, we can go into details later about the mistakes that we made in purchases, and we certainly will. But for right now, I thought it best to concentrate on the purchases that we made when we started out that have been rock solid purchases. And the number one thing I wanna show you is our handy dandy little generator here. Uh, this is a Champion dual fuel generator. Uh, now, just touching on our rig, it's a 25 foot, 30 foot travel trailer, uh, a Keystone Bullet, and it has one air conditioner is the point of all that. It consumes about 2,800 watts. Um, this runs that flawlessly. Uh, over the time we've been boondocking, We've had times where we, you know, it's 90 degrees in the summer. We ran it nonstop all day long and on propane too. I only broke it in on gasoline because I thought it was important to do so. Although the instruction manual didn't say that was necessary. I just felt that the extra lubricants that are in gasoline would better precipitate breaking it in. Uh, just real quick to go over some of the features that this thing has, and uh, you know, a lot of generators have the same thing, but I'll just touch on the features. So it's got a 30 amp output RV ready to go. Uh, it's not a locking switch, and I'll touch bases on why I like that in just a minute. Uh, it has two 120 volt outlets. It has a 12 volt cigarette lighter type uh, outlet. Uh, it has two ports for running two of these in parallel if you'd want to do that. And uh, it has ground if you wanted to put a solid ground into it so you weren't worried about getting shocked. Uh, on switch, battery powered, and uh, this is the start switch. And it has an economy switch, which we usually leave it in economy mode all the time. We don't have any problems with it. Uh, things I like about this generator, number one is the manual. The manual is rock solid. It's well, well written in English, better than mine. And uh, it, it has a comprehensive part list. Uh, anything that you may need for this, although we've never ordered anything, it is there and it's available to you along with the 800 number and all that good stuff. Now, as I said earlier, we've always run it on propane. And uh, it's not how I initially envisioned it. The reason I bought this when we were first starting out, I thought it might be a good thing to have a dual fuel because uh, the trailer has propane tanks on it. So I thought maybe in a pinch, maybe we'd pull a tank off. But in the reality of 101, I never bought a gas can for it other than I had a gas can at home that I used to uh, put gas in it to break it in. Rest of the time, I wound up getting a, a third can, a propane can, a 20 pound or five gallon can, as some people call them. And so we have three. And I've just always run it on propane. Now on propane, uh, it purports to make a little less juice. It's right there. Propane doesn't, the dynamics of propane, it doesn't uh, produce as much electricity. And I'm sorry, I'll just say right now, if you're hearing noise in the background, there's not much we can do about it. We're in quartzite, it's December, and it's just going to get busier and busier, but here we are. And um, so uh, it has a choke, and um, if you're running it on gasoline, you don't do anything with this little switch, but this switch uh, for propane is, it's not just a cover for the propane inlet. When you kick this up, it it is changing the carburation system over so it's ready to run for propane. You plug the propane hose in there, turn the battery on, hit the starter switch, and off you go. And um, it, on higher elevations than that, I've read about, well, you're not gonna get as much horsepower and all that, and all those things. Our practical experience with this generator has been this. 
it works. It's worked for us in every situation. We've been as high as 8,500 feet, 9,000 feet. One time we were around 8,700 feet caught in a snowstorm, 14 degrees. And this ran, it started, it ran, and it had to run all night uh, because it was 14 degrees and the furnace is, is running like crazy too. It, it's just rock solid. It's, it's never let us down. It has uh, an overload protection switch. Or it will kick out. It, it's still running, but it's not putting any load to the out. There's no power out. And when that happens, you, you go, and usually what it is, this, this plug has jarred loose, which brings me to the point, well, Ed, if it's jarred loose, why don't you like the locking thing? Well, I made a mistake one time of uh, Sandy went to go do an errand, and I, I forgot to unhook this, and the generator sits in the back of the truck. And she took off, and uh, it, it pulled out. If it would have been a locking one, I don't even want to think what it would have happened. I, I've never really had any experience problems with it not being locking when it's running and I leave it in the back of the truck and in the instruction manual they say don't do that but practically I've got pulled out a little bit here for this purpose uh, of, of showing it but normally it sits in the back the propane canister sits over here we fire it up I plug the hose in I just put a, a coil in the cord so it, it takes whatever vibration and I've never had a problem with it since I started doing that. So this was a really great purchase for us. And we didn't start out thinking, uh, I didn't anyway, that we were going to use it the way we do. But this is our solid power horse. It uh, takes care of our AC needs, our furnace needs. And uh, it was just one of the greatest things that we did. I, I am so happy with the purchase of this thing. There's other generators out there that may be just as good, but frankly, I don't know what to say. This is, uh, this is what we know. I want to say one other thing. Now, this was pricey. It was around a thousand bucks, and you can get a lot cheaper generator. Part of it is because it's dual fuel, but the other thing is it's, it's low decibel rated. It's around 92, 95 decibels. So it is, you can run this in state parks, on BLM land, where they have decibel rating regulations on uh, your generators. And, you know, that was important to Sandy and I. We wanted to make sure we had a generator that was compliant. And, and plus for our own personal uh, wants. We don't want to annoy our neighbors and all that uh, by running a generator. And I can tell you, frankly, I mean, I'm try trying to slam other people but when you hear somebody running a construction generator and they're literally 400 yards away f from you, I, my heart bleeds for their neighbors because, uh, come on, you know, cough up the extra hundred bucks or so and, and get a generator that was built for the purpose of RVing and uh, has that little baby sound to it. So that's our generator in a nutshell. And I'm going to move on to something else. But uh, right now, an intermission. Yeah, an intermission. Okay, the other rock solid purchase I wanted to go over with you all that we made. And I feel like I should have a step stool because I'm, you know, I'm down here. But this water tank was absolutely one of the best purchases we ever made. Um, now. Uh, this is another item just like the generator that we bought when we were living in a stick and brick and trying to figure out what we were going to do. Um, so we bought this and I'm so happy that we did. It took a little bit of time of research because I didn't know exactly how I was going to do that. And I, it took me some time to find this uh, polypropylene, uh, well actually I think it's a PVC uh, container and uh, it was on a site where they do farm supplies for like horses and that. And uh, Sandy since learned that uh, now the person is selling these uh, for RV needs. Um, but he really helped me out. Um, it, I bought this along with a 12 volt pump, which incidentally is the same exact kind of pump. Uh, I mean, 
just turn key. I could, I could put it in the trailer if the trailer failed. Uh, the pump water pump in the trailer. So it uses the same water pump. Um, it's of course fed in from the, the bottom and it runs up through the pump. Um, I wasn't going to dig all this stuff out to show you that. And I ran it into um, this Flexilla green hose up here. Now we have a short bed truck so it works out to five foot uh, you know, it was hard to get hoses. You could get three foot, ten foot. So I bought two Flexilla hoses. Each one's three foot. Tied them together with a coupler. And I have made some changes to this over the, over time. But I think I got it down pat now. So now's the time to show you what I did. For the vent system, this is a, a inch and a half uh, pipe fitting that goes in the back. I found this adapter on Amazon, which takes it down to the three-quarter inch uh, garden hose thread. And uh, I, I put a, a vent hose in there, put it out through one of the, uh, just popped one of the plugs out of the bed of the truck, ran that down between the cab and the bed and the bottom of it. I just put a standard auto filter in there. No bugs can get up inside. It can still breathe and vent because, of course, you need to get the air out of there. Uh, it's got to be able to breathe. So that takes care of that. Uh, the other thing I did was I put uh, this quick disconnect on, and it makes it so much quicker than filling. It used to be a screw cap. And uh, I just used these little caps to keep everything sealed up. So it was a little bit extra money, but it's, it's really, I love it this way now. It's just so much quicker. And, you know, we can treat the tank. We can uh, just put the normal filter uh, or sanitizer liquids that you buy at Walmart or an RV supply store. Uh, it's got a piece of plywood underneath it with some sides and just held in with the strap. It's never moved on us. It's just right there. And it's a 47 gallon tank. Now I could, I, I could have flipped it up the other way and it was just clear. But when I got thinking everything through, I wanted it laying down to give me a little bit of room so I could set things up here. As you see, I've got some junk sitting up there that is good junk. I need it. But uh, the importance of this being a 47 gallon tank. Now we've got, uh, what Sandy, is, what's our tank for the fresh water? Freshwater tank in the trailer is 40 gallons. 40 gallons of fresh water in, in the, in, in the uh, trailer. But you know, you've got these other two tanks. You've got two gray tanks. You've got one for the shower that's 20 some odd gallons. 30. 30, excuse me. And then you've got the one for the sink, which is another 25, 30 gallons. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize, you know, if you're doing dishes regularly, taking your showers and all that, you're going to deplete your fresh water tank uh, before the other tanks are full. And of course, your uh, commode uses a certain amount of water too. So I find myself running to fetch water from time to time when we're boondocking. And you know, it's really not that big of a deal. It actually makes the boondocking so much of an easy experience. I, I don't understand why other people uh, I'm sure they have the reasons why they don't like boondocking and they find it such a hard thing to do. And we're going to do a video about that too, by the way. Um, but anyway, when we get low on fresh water, I just run my fresh water wherever I have to go to get it, come back and pump it in uh, in the trailer and we're good to go. Uh, I don't like to travel with it full because, of course, uh, when it's full, it's approximately 300 pounds of water and, you know, you don't want to travel with it. But it works well for us and you can see um, right now it's right at the, on the strap, but it's, it's got about a third of a tank of water in it. doesn't matter, we're boondocking and we'll go through that water in no time at all. So this was another great purchase that we made. And again, now they're selling them, targeting the RV folks, uh, such as us out there, that may have a need for such things. It, it's, it was just a great purchase. Highly recommended it. When I see people running around with blue 50-gallon drums and they're round and they're trying to figure out how to deal with the roundness and they've put six, seven ratchet straps over the top of it trying to hold it in place, 
it, it just looks cumbersome and uh, difficult to work with. I, I don't know how they really go about pumping their systems. And when I've got this full, I just uh, take our a 10 foot hose and I pull up alongside the trailer. I disconnect this and I got a cap on there to keep that clean. And uh, the other hose clips on. I'm gonna stick it in the trailer. And uh, I wired the 12 volt pump up here and it's the number two switch that fires that. Now this gang switch panel that I put in, I was gonna run, hardwire it to the battery and run heavy gauge wire all the way up to the back of the bed. I changed my mind on that because it just, I started thinking, you know, shorts, something like that. It's just, I was too worried about doing that. So I've got this handy dandy little extension cord with the cigarette plug lighter on it. I open up the back door of the truck and interrupt General's apartment by plugging this in the back outlet for the cigarette lighter adapter. Gives this power to run the pump and then I just fold this up and put it away. And it's a little bit cumbersome. I wish I would have uh, hardwired this in some other way, but every time I try and think of how to do that, um, I, I don't want to do it because I, I was just afraid of getting in trouble. I mean, the pump, uh, it draws some amperage and I was going to tie into the cargo lights and thought then I could just throw a switch in the truck, but uh, I don't know that it could handle the load. Uh, that particular circuit, I think, is just 10 amps, and I think it may be pushing it. And my thought is, you know, the cigarette lighter, I know that's 20 amps. I know it's going to work. So it's working. So, you know, anything tinkered with long enough will cease to function. That's a good thing to remember. So it's working. The changes I made here, it, it worked out better. More of a convenience thing than anything. But... It is one of the rock solid purchases and we'll put a link in so you can see where you can get that tank. So uh, the other thing I, I would touch on uh, is, you know, there's different ways to haul water and we've seen people with uh, the water bladders. Well, I, I would, first off, I gotta say, I don't have any experience with a water bladder, but I've been at water stations and I've watched people use them. And in my humble opinion, it, it just looks like a lot of work. I mean, I suppose I store easily enough, but uh, my concern would be about getting all the water out of it when you do put it in storage. I just wonder if there's a sanitation issue there. And I've never really seen anybody, use, they all seem to use them as a gravity feed. And if you got it laying in the back of your pickup truck and you're trying to feed into your trailer, the drop in height is marginal. It, it just doesn't seem like it's a efficient way to move water to me and then also it might fold up very nicely but you need the whole bed of your pickup truck when you fold it out when you're going to fill it so um i think that this was the way to go for us uh, certainly somebody else might uh, have a better approach to it and we'd love to hear if you have found something that works better than this or have some suggestions or have a comment about the water bladders, but uh, I'm not a water bladder guy. Sorry, folks. So that is uh, the first video of uh, our rock solid purchases that we use constantly um, in our boondocking experiences over more than a year now. And we're, I'm going to do another one. We got another one coming up in a bit, so please keep tuned for that. And we'll go over a couple more things. There are rock solid purchases you can't go wrong getting if you're planning on boondocking full time with a travel trailer. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Tune in, subscribe. We love you. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear them, good or bad. And thanks again for watching. Bye bye.